I think what we try to understand is, is the capital flows. When you think about capital flows, what, we, what did we learn 10 years ago almost to the week was that flows mattered more than stock. And as soon as the flows uh, became meaningful, the stock became important. Right. Um, and so this idea of what happened to Lehman, what happened to Bear Stearns, what almost happened to Goldman and Morgan Stanley actually applies in the context of the sovereign realm. There are, a lot, there are many more variables to the equation, but when you think about how China operates and how it operates globally, you have to bifurcate your thought into two buckets, right? One bucket is how China operates domestically. They have, an, they have a renminbi-based economy that they essentially control. And I think global investors understand that they can control their internal uh, accounts of RMB uh, basically however they wish. They can print more, they can recap banks, they can make losses go away, they can make people go away. Uh, you know, they can do all kinds of things internally that we really aren't privy to and probably won't ever be uh, privy to. But the, the kind of the barometer or let's say the arbitrator of China's cake and eat it two strategy is the exchange rate vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world. Yeah. Now, as you know, they're a massive net importer of goods of call it a raw materials. Uh, whether that is um, iron ore or crude oil or der derivatives thereof, um, they need foreign currency to continue to grow China Inc.'s yeah. working capital. You think about it as working capital. The way that that works is they need positive capital flows annually on a net basis. So their current account has to be positive. They have to be growing their wealth sure. and they have to be growing it in foreign currency terms, not just in RMB terms. And so what we've studied are those capital flows. And we've studied their use of dollars, euros, and yen. And really, it's mostly all dollars. The euros and yen are, are negligible. Um, when you think about dollars, China's brought roughly 400 million people out of abject poverty into the middle class. And they've taken the middle class to the upper class and the upper class to the elite. Well, what's the first right the wealthy Chinese and middle class Chinese want to exercise? And it's to exercise, or the right to travel. Right, sure. Because the PRC said, we, we want you to travel. Uh, well, when they travel and spend abroad, uh, they spend dollars. Right. They don't spend RMB because um, Jamba Juice won't take RMB. Right. And the, the hotels in London won't take RMB and the hotels here won't either. And we're a long way from that. And when you think about, you look at the SWIFT global settlement system, if you look at the most recent report that SWIFT has put out, Chinese GDP is around, if you dollarize the RMB at the current exchange rate, is about 15% of global GDP, right? They're the second largest economy yep. in the world behind us. But in SWIFT settlement terms, the RMB doesn't even amount to 1% of SWIFT settlements. So they kind of have this, um, they have this world that's of their own conjuring.